After I helped you decide to get the perfect green screen background for your room size in the first lesson of this green screen tutorial series, let's talk about lighting your green screen as good as possible to give you the best results. I will show you setups for different room sizes and just like in lesson 1, I will compare all the lighting setups at the end of the video so that you can see how big the difference really is. Let's start with the basics. In the background video I told you that the best case would be a background that only has one single color or tone. Well guess what? The biggest shade is not caused by wrinkles, but by you as a presenter. Your own shadow creates a much darker tone of green on the background and that would require you to do more aggressive keying in your software. That again will eat away hair and even parts of your body, but we will get to software later. For now we'll deal with how to best remove your own shadow from the green screen background to get into video editing with the best possible starting point. In regard to room size, I will start with the best case scenario, which is a rather big room, and then move on to a medium sized room and even to a very small room. Stop! Don't scrub forward now if you're only interested in the setups for the smaller rooms. For your understanding about green screen lighting in general, you need to watch the part for the big room too, because it will cover the basics. To better make you understand, let me start with a bad example and improve it step by step. I have just switched on one single monolight to light myself in this basement studio. You obviously see the shadow that that light casts on the background, you see that the light doesn't actually flatter me, and you also see that the background isn't properly lit at all. So let me add a second monolight on the opposite side to brighten the shadows in my face and on the background. That is a tiny bit better, but it still causes very hard shadow. Beside that, it is very hard to look at because that small powerful light source glares like crazy. So what can we do? We could add a softbox to each of the monolights to soften the shadows. But softboxes have downsides. One downside is that you lose quite a bit of power. I already made up for that by increasing the power from 15% to 30%. And the other downside obviously is that softboxes are bigger and take up a lot of space. But the shadows improve a lot, both in my face and on the background. How well does that two light setup work for green screen? I have again set up my wig and I will do a test. To remove the background I need to keep pretty aggressively and that will eat into the hair. That's partly because of those shadows that are still there, so we need to get rid of them. One option would be to just step away from the background. As you can see the shadows already decreased. But if you have ever seen big green screen studios you may have realized that they light the background separately. So let's do that. Let's start out with our bare bone monolights again. By the way, I'm using Nanlite FS150s. They are great quality, with 150 watts pretty bright, but you can also lower them to 1%. This is 1% and this is 100%. So that's a pretty big range which is very helpful for lighting backgrounds. They operate at very low noise levels, unless you stand right here. So if you put them to the sides, which you would usually do, you don't hear them. And that is very important because you're recording sound and fan noise from your lights will greatly reduce the sound quality. And the Nanlite FS150 is pretty affordable too at around $175. You can of course always go even cheaper but you wouldn't save all that much. And if you're like me in the long run you end up spending twice. So better go with something solid right from the start. By the way as always a link to all the tools I use in this video down in the description. Back to lighting the background separately. If you want to do that, one thing you need to consider is the distance of the lights to the background. Why is that? Now look, if I step back, I'm suddenly lit by these lights too, but we wanted to light the background separately. So we need to move the lights further to the background and suddenly you see it's not all that even anymore. What can we do? First, we can obviously rotate the lights slightly towards the center, but it's still not even. The next thing I can do is use a diffuser paper on each of the lights. That eats away a little bit of the light, but it's already a lot more even than before. We could of course use our softboxes again, but as I said, they take up a lot of space. So I'll show you another, even better option. I will add so-called barn doors to each of the light. How does that help, you may wonder? It still looks almost the same, but the good thing with the barn doors is I can control the spill of the light. So I can put them further back and by closing this side door 
I can avoid the spill on me. The only downside is that we lost a bit of light, but we're at 30% of the power, so we can easily increase that. And there we go, we have a very evenly lit background. And all that with a rather small footprint of the lights, because we didn't use the softboxes. If I now measure the light with a light meter on several spots of the background, I see that it is very evenly lit. If it is not, you can always rotate the lights, and of course, you can also increase or decrease the power. Now that we lit our background, it's time to light our subject. What you have to understand before we start lighting is very subjective and depends a lot on the background you want to put your green screen footage onto. This lighting might look ugly if you look at the clip straight out of the camera, because the lighting is so hard. But if you put it on a beach background, it looks pretty natural, because you would expect the hard shadows from the sun. Rather than flat looking lighting that might look quite good straight out of camera, but not so good on a beach background. With that said, let's start creating the light for you. If I place myself in the frame so that I don't cast any shadows, you see that I'm a silhouette. So I have to add more lights. And to do that, let me introduce you to my favorite continuous lights. You might think these are lightsabers, but no, they are LED tube lights also from Nanlite. The so-called Nanlite power tubes are super flexible to use because they take up little to no space. And they're even RGB lights, so you can dial in any color you want for awesome effects for photography and videography. I will create a separate video about that. One thing I want to show you right away though is the effects. One of them is the police car effect, so you can play the gangster in your next YouTube video. Cool, right? But back to green screen lighting. The power tubes have all sorts of mounting options. You can, for example, hang them from the ceiling by just drilling a hook into the ceiling. Or you can use the magnets to mount them in the back of your van, which makes them incredibly space saving. But if you prefer, you can mount them on tripods. The good thing when you light the background separately is that you have complete control over your light on the subject. For example, I can choose to have only one light for a very contrasty setup. With most NAND lights, you can even control them from within the app because they have Bluetooth built in. So it sometimes is good to have all lights from one manufacturer. I will keep both lights at full power though because they are very far out to keep them out of the frame and that creates a bit of a contrast anyway. If you want to save money, you could also use only one power tube and mount it horizontally. If I turn off the background lights, you can see how cool that would look for a non-green screen setup. And that's our first result for the comparison. Before we talk about smaller sized rooms, for this medium sized room we could further improve the look and the quality of the green screen keying by adding two more lights. I am aware that this will add to the costs of your studio setup, but I want you to understand all the options. What helps improve the keying is to add a rim light. That light will create a slightly brighter edge of your subject. That avoids color spill from the green screen background because it overpowers the reflected green light and helps with separation, which is the most important thing later in the software. There are different options to add that rim light. You could add more power tubes from the side, not facing the background, but your subject. We will get to that when we talk about smaller rooms. But the better option for medium sized rooms like this, in my opinion, is adding two more monolights from the back. You could get another two Nanlite FS150 like I use them, or you could potentially get a lower powered unit, because I currently run it at less than 10%, which is only 15 watts. They have a cheaper FS60 with 60 watts, which is even bicolor, so you can change the color temperature, or you can get a higher priced Forza 60C that is like the power tube and RGB light. And now you may wonder, what is the advantage of an RGB light when all you do is use it as a rim light? Particularly with green screen, the advantage of colored light is pretty big, because you can adapt the color to the light of the background. Let me mimic that by using a red gel filter. My final background includes a red light on the right, so when shooting with such a background, you would normally get a spill from that light onto your subject. Having a colored rim light will give you that spill and make your final result much more realistic. As I said, you can get that with gel filters, but working with gels is a bit cumbersome at times. Having an RGB light like the power tubes is much easier. It comes at a price, but it may be worth it depending on your use case. Either way, this is the result we get with a regular white rim light. Can you see how well the hairs separate from the background? 
Okay, and since I also learn something with every video I create for you, I have decided to change my personal green screen setup too, for reasons I will explain in the final comparison at the end of the video. I thought I had a good setup, but now I have a perfect setup. This is what I will use from now on, because it gave me the best results of all my tests. I have two vertical 30-inch power tubes as a main light, and at the same distance to the background are my two Nanlite FS150 with the barn doors, so they are now even further away from the background than before. They are now also creating a brighter background that I used before and run at full power. And as a rim light, I'm using two more Nanlites FS150 at very low power, around 8%. Let me show you the results I get with this six light setup. With adding all those lights, you probably wonder about the room size of my setup. While the size of this room is bigger, I actually only used 18 by 13 feet, which is 5 meter 50 by 4 meter. If you crop closer or use the wider lens, you could go with roughly 16 and a half by 11 and a half feet or 5 by 3 and a half meter, and the very same setup. I will give you a link with a sketch of all my exact setups in the description of this video. The ceiling in my basement studio is very low, just 7.5 feet or 230 centimeters, which particularly makes the rim lighting a bit more challenging. For rooms with a regular height, that is usually easier. Now you may ask yourself, but Wolf, I'm actually interested in a full body green screen setup. Okay, so let's discuss that too. While you can get away with the same room size, a bigger, particularly longer room is definitely better. Let me first show you how I change the lights and then I'll tell you why a bigger room helps a lot with full body green screen shots. First, you have to bring the background lights closer to the background, because if you move around, you will be lit by them if you walk towards the edge of your green screen. That would look unnatural if you bring in the final background. Then I'd use soft boxes instead of the reflectors, because now that the lights are closer to the background, you need even more diffusion. I would, however, rotate them slightly inwards to have a more even green screen. Personally, I'd leave the rim lights on, even though they cast a shadow in the front. That is something that needs to be done in software. In general, rim lights are a question of how perfect and realistic you want your final result to be. If your final background doesn't have a source that would create the rim light, it might look a bit weird. But if you look at even Hollywood movies, the lighting is hardly ever 100% realistic. It's just meant to look good. So we have background lights, we have rim lights. Now we need to make sure that your main subject is lit correctly. I will use two vertical 30-inch power tubes and here on top I will also use a 30-inch power tube horizontally, but since I don't have a third one, I will use two 15-inch tubes instead. Does that give you a perfect result? Of course not. Professional Hollywood green screen studios are huge and they allow for a much more even background light and of course for a more sophisticated light for your subject. But if you use the right green screen keying software, that setup will key out the background pretty okay. And now to the room size of your full body shots. What is very important is perspective and focal length. If your final background is shot from a low angle, you have to shoot from a low angle too, to make it look more realistic. And that can cause troubles in small rooms. Here if I go low, my head will leave the green area of the background. Another thing to consider is focal length. If you shoot your green screen with an ultra wide angle lens just because you don't have more space to step further back, and then pop that footage onto a background that was shot with a normal or telephoto lens, it will look weird because it just doesn't match. Beside that, in small rooms when using wide angle, you are limited when you want to walk around because the distortion will make the foreground, which is you, much bigger than the background, so you quickly leave the background. Being able to step back with the camera and use a longer lens will increase the area that you can walk around on a lot, and beside that, it reduces distortion. So, can you green screen full body shots in medium sized rooms like this? Yes, you can. Will it look perfect? Probably not. Okay, so much for full body shots. Before we continue, let me just quickly talk about lighting setups for green screen photography. In photography, you obviously don't have to care much about lights in your frame, so you can place the rim lights very close to your body because you can later mask them out anyway. But that doesn't mean you can be sloppy with your background. The more even and well lit your background is, the better and easier you can key it out. While the size of the room we used so far could be that of a garage, let's change to a much smaller size space, like a regular room. 
Let's say we have a room size of roughly 13 by 10 feet or 4 by 3 meters. I will obviously stay in the same room because that is my studio, but I will set myself some borders with these order poles. So consider our new room from these order poles to the cupboard on the other side. I could keep much of the setup the same, I just have to move the lights further towards the background. That again will make the background less even, so we will use the softboxes now. And since we don't have as much space available, we have to make some sacrifices. That is first of all the rim lights. If you have a very high ceiling, you can still use them. If you don't, it gets more difficult. My ceiling is very narrow, so I have to make changes. Oh, I completely forgot, of course I need to move the camera closer too, which I just did. And obviously you see that in the wide angle shot, I look rather weird now. So I actually have to step back even more, which means I also need to move the softboxes further to the background. If you want wider shots, of course. I don't want that, so I will leave it like it is. But back to the rim lights. I have now added two 15 inch power tubes. As you can see, due to the softboxes, they hardly cast any shadow on the background. And they give me a perfect, beautiful rim light. Time for the final result with my wig. Now, what if your room gets even smaller, or you don't have as many lights available? Let me give you an alternative lighting option. I have removed the softboxes and the 15-inch power tubes and replaced them with a 30-inch power tube on either side. But I don't angle it at me, like the rim light, but slightly towards the background to also light the background. Can you see the difference? but they still give me a bit of a rim light. So I now have a three light setup, a nice key light, a rim light, and at the same time, a background light that lights the background pretty evenly. So it's time for the next hair test. Those three tube lights are super easy to set up. Not only do they take away almost no space, you could also mount them everywhere. But let's challenge ourselves even more. So far we assumed that we have a separate room available. What if you haven't and you have to set up the green screen in your tiny office? Or you only have a part of a room available because the rest is filled with cupboards? You would assume that this would change a lot. Well, yes. And no. Let me just move the borders for that tiny room by moving the auto poles. This room is now only five and a half by six and a half feet, which is roughly 170 by 200 centimeter, so pretty tiny. By mounting the two 30 inch power tubes very close to the background but angled 90 degrees to the sides, I get a rim light and the background light at the same time. It is obviously not as even as before, but considering the tiny room, it's incredibly even. For the main lights, I used two 15 inch power tubes. I could of course also have used a 30 inch power tube. So again, a three light setup. Again, the small footprints of the power tubes makes them extremely versatile. I mounted them with super clamps, but you could also mount them on the ceiling or on the side walls and of course, on stands. Since this room is so small, I have to stand pretty close to the background. But as you can see, moving a few inches away makes a lot of a difference. Now let me bring the camera into the room to see the final result. I have to use a 30mm lens to get this shot. Of course, very wide, quite a lot of distortion, but you have to make compromises. If I used an even wider lens, so 24mm, it would look like this. I guess it's time for the wig. And now it is time to compare our results. First, let's have a look at the clip without the rim light versus the clip with rim light. If we zoom in on the hair, we see that the rim light not only shows more detail, the one without rim light also looks rather dull. If we next compare all the shots that have a rim light, we see that the background doesn't have the same brightness. But what is better, brighter or darker? Let me show you another test to find out. I have done shots with four different power settings for the background lights. Here they are side by side. And now let me use the default keyer again. You see that keying out the darkest background left quite a dark vignette, so darker corners, while the two brighter ones hardly have any vignette at all. If you don't move a lot in your videos, that's not a problem because you can cut away the edges, as I will show you later. But if you plan to move around, then this is quite important. So the brighter one is definitely better. But the other, much more important thing we see is that when we zoom in on the head and the hair, the brighter background has a much cleaner key around the hair. Compare the darkest background 
for example, to the second brightest. Let me show you another advantage of a brighter background. When using darker backgrounds, the edge of your subject gets a bit of a dark rim. That is particularly true for brighter clothing and brighter skin. Compare that to the same scene with a brighter background. Unfortunately, there is also a downside to that rather bright background. It will spill light onto your subject and you will particularly see that on skin or sometimes on brighter clothing. Me, not having all that much hair on my head, you can see the reflection of the green background pretty quick. Compare the brightest green to the darkest green. That is much less of a problem if you can just move further away from the background. Compare this shot with me being just 3 feet from the background versus this one with 9 feet from the background. Can you see the color spill on my skin? So what is best to use? Usually you'd go for a brightness like this one behind me. I'll tell you exactly how to set that in the green screen camera settings lesson. But what I can tell you right away is that you need quite powerful background lights. The Nanlite FS150 have 150 watts and are perfect for that. So if you have a room that's big enough to use monolights, go with lights that have enough power. But back to our original sample shots. Now that we know all that, what do we learn for the comparison for our different room sizes? First, a rim light helps a lot with keying. It keys easier and gives a much better and professional result. Beside that, it just looks better. And second, with smaller rooms, it's definitely harder to get an even and at the same time bright enough background. But you can still get good results even if you don't have a big room and many lights with my green screen editing secrets. But before we get to that, we need to make sure you have the perfect camera settings, which we will discuss in the next video.